Good morning. Happy Monday morning. Happy Monday. So we're back for another Monday morning chats. And this morning's topic is uncertainty. And um, yeah, but we'd love for you to say hi and jump on and tell us where you're listening into. Um, and yeah, so so Nicolette chose this topic <laughs> this morning um, of uncertainty. So and, and we haven't really had much of a chance to to touch base um, to to go okay well what what, what are yeah we what are we actually yeah yeah so we're just going to dive straight on into uncertainty which is kind of perfect <laughs> for the topic <laughs> absolutely but, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear um what what's been inspired for you with this with this topic of uncertainty um in my in my own self-reflection uh, in the past couple of weeks, I've been witnessing myself in different stages of uncertainty and how that feels. Um, and there's two different types of, of uncertainty in my mind. So there's there's uncertainty when we take a big leap, um, a leap of faith towards something, like the uncertainty around how are we going to get there, what steps are going to um, need to be taken, and we don't really know what the, um, the how-to looks like and that bit's uncertain and then the other um uncertainty is when we're letting go of something and and there's the the different stages and we've spoken before about the grief in grieving the old versions of ourselves and uh what we mean to other people in those times and and all of those kinds of things and when we let go of something there's like this period of reliving or re remembering what that that person or that job or that um, experience was like and wanting to be back there in the feeling before we decided to let it go and, and step into something different. Mm -hmm. And then, so after we get over the, the longing of wanting to be back there, then there's this sort of empty void of space that feels really like I should be anchored to something, but I'm not. <laughs> and and so what do I then replace that with? And and we have this urge to to replace it with something else when if we can just sit in the discomfort of the uncertainty and um and focus on the things that we want to draw in, like peace and love and inspiration and and then um that involvement is a beautiful thing, but mm. uncertainty can feel in both ways. Uncertainty can feel really awful. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, I guess the the reason from from that more evolutionary perspective of why uncertainty feels so awful is because it activates the fight, flight, or freeze. Um, uh, mechanism within us and 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 that's simply because the ancestors that were less inclined to go out and adventure were less likely to be eaten by the tiger so um you know so it served us over over our evolution to to be more cautious and so when that uncertainty um pops up there, there's a tendency to retract and um and to stand still and and to not venture out and um, and for me, well, I think for everyone really, there's a few exceptions. However, um, <laughs> as as an overall, it's about training yourself to go when the uncertainty arises. I willingly embrace it anyway, and yeah. and I think that willingness piece is um, is what you what allows for a smooth transition into the new chapter verse the holding on tightly to the old if I can willingly surrender into the unknown I enter a flow state I enter a life is happening for me mentality and you drop the resistance and as soon as your body drops the resistance you've unhooked yourself from the fight flight or freeze mechanism um, yes, but, but my, my thinking had been very much along the same lines of, well, 
there's actually different forms of uncertainty and, and when they pop up and and how we scaffold ourselves out of that place of uncertainty does kind of change depending on what what the uncertainty is um but yeah was when when we start thinking about scaffolding ourselves out of the uncertainty what what comes up for you well then the other thing that comes up for me is the uncertainty that's created by the things that we can't control so um you know the the rest of the world being in a fear state um you know uh different people's energies that you come into contact with events that happen you know car accidents whatever that whatever that is that is outside of your control that happens um i find the the easiest way for me to come back to that calm and embracing embracing the unknown is to focus on the things that i can control i can get out of bed in the morning and make myself go to the gym <laughs> well some morning <laughs> <laughs> I can I can meditate every day and focus on on the surrendering and being open to what the universe has got in store for me that day. I can there's I can control the nutrition that I put in my body. And when we take control of the things that we can to um to move ourselves forward in a positive way, then that feels um like we have um, we have stability and we have security in our own ability to handle things yeah yeah i agree and you know the the way i kind essentially for me it comes down to how are we framing uncertainty what is uncertainty what 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 are we allowing uncertainty to indicate to us? Because if I take uncertainty as threat, we're going to revert. But if I actually, I've, I've got some options in that if I look at uncertainty as an opportunity, one, to not only grow, but how do I train myself to turn uncertainty into certainty? So what do I need to activate within myself to go, no, I I am uh, the creator of my life and, and I choose what I bring into my world and how I respond to my world. And so how do I change uncertainty into certainty and an opportunity to do that? So, so that's that's a perception shift, but then also the the paradigm shift of going uncertainty is where the magic happens. And, and being able to surrender into the infinite potential and actually become aligned with that so then the action potentials can rise out of us as, as um, the, the circumstance mm, allows opposed to trying to muscle it, then, then again things start happening for us and, and at a rate much quicker often um then then trying to influence all the variables one by one because you're in it so yeah for, for me um getting out of uncertainty which is such a big inhibitor because often in 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 states of uncertainty the subconscious starts um trying to keep us safe and the way that it will do that is to go there's something about you that can't cope so that's when all the stories start playing that there's something wrong with me or in um states of uncertainty it will be that essentially there's something wrong with others and that others are untrustworthy um and therefore you're not safe so so it will start to play the stories to to try and keep you small to keep you to keep you still and so then it's about well, what am i inferring as the threat Mm. Mm. And, and I think many things happen that are out of um you know that that if things happen that we haven't predicted or that we don't expect it's not necessarily a bad thing so switching switching our, our um reaction around to being not not taking um mistakes or blips in the road as being roadblocks but being oh 
I wonder where this is leading me now. And and that's why um, and I, I use my artwork as a as an example for life a lot. And I love I love doing pouring paintings because I choose the colors that I'm going to work with, right? And then and then once they're they're poured out onto the canvas and I'm and I'm um, moving them around, I don't actually know where they're going to go or which colors are going to mix with each other or and and it might go a certain way and I think, oh, that's not that's not what I wanted. And then it turns out to be a masterpiece, right? Mm -hmm. Um so your life can be a masterpiece if you just set yourself up for success and then let go of the outcome. Mm, yes. So yeah. I think that the taking your power back comes with the letting go of the outcome, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. then we're actually saying to uncertainty, I'm okay with you. Let's yes. Start. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And um, actually a recent discovery for me is when not only do you want to surrender into the unknown or the uncertainty and go, I'm okay with you, like I'm comfy here, to energetically expand your space of what you have so there's actually a gap so new can come in. And, and essentially we're not very good at not feeling full. So obviously a lot of the work that we do is um, releasing the old of what, what has currently, <laughs> what's currently in your psyche and, and occupying your energy field um, and releasing what no longer serves you and filling it back up with what, what you want um, and, and changing our, our energy and our vibration that way, how we feel to others and then that attracts in new opportunities. And what I've recently discovered is there's an additional step of actually leaving space. And that, that's its own version of unknown and uncertainty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to go, I'm okay with the space being there. And, and that that's a different feeling. Um, so, so yeah, like, and, and that also brings the point that, that this is a continual evolution. And, and in, in setting the intention to continuously evolve, not only do we embrace the uncertainty, we continue to venture out. And, and I think that's a really um, pivotal point in redefining your life. Mm. I got the image when you were speaking of um, like of swimming and and letting go, letting go of the shore basically and and swimming but being okay to tread water for a while, because while you're treading water, there's beautiful things that you can see along the way, right? There's, you might see a, a tropical fish or, or um, something else that would have passed you by if you had your head down and your goggles on and you were just going for it. Um, and I think that a lot of people who are entrepreneurs like ourselves or high achievers have constantly got their head down going somewhere and and but it's actually in the in the sitting in the uncertainty and and treading the water for a while that we get to just relax and enjoy where we're at now and yeah. then let it evolve yes yeah absolutely and what you've just said there um reminds me of another concept which is related in that when you look at the physiological states of terror and exhilaration, they're actually the same um, physiological state, but what has changed is the meaning that I give to the stimulus. So for some, standing on the cliff's edge will <laughs> incite terror. <laughs> I was like, Wee! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and, and so what's changed is, is our perception of the stimuli of whether I want to engage or whether I want to um, retreat. So that, that point of being in the water and actually taking in the wonder of uh, our, our now instantly expands you and opens you back up. Um, and, yeah, and then, and then we're back in attraction mode. Mm. So 
yeah, I guess when is is there a time that springs to mind for you where you have specifically overcome uncertainty? Many times. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm just trying to think of I'm trying to think of one that's uh, that's relatable to people. Um, in my business in the last twelve months, I've uh, I my business journey the t- sort of two years prior to that was very much head down um, swimming. Trained myself to do a lot of lives. Trained myself to do meditations online and and be in that mode. Um, and show up, show up for clients and, you know, work big weeks and put, put all of my energy into my business. Um, I realized at the end of last year that I needed to let go of the being on the treadmill and, and on taking myself where other people led me. So I needed to sit in the, um, I needed to tread water for a while and sit in the knowledge that I have about where I want to be and who I want to work with. Yeah. I want to work with you, obviously, because that happened in January. <laughs> um, and if I still had have had my head down, we we wouldn't be working together because uh, I probably would have been like, oh, no, nah, I don't have time to do a podcast. I've got yeah. clients all day Monday, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that was really um, and actually keeping on saying to myself, I, I have the tools. I know, I know how to, I don't need a, a high flying business mentor to tell me how to suck eggs. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but prior to that, I thought I did and I needed to let go of that idea. And it's, that's really scary when something's your baby and you've poured all of your en- energy into it. And then you're like, oh yeah, probably need to go in a different direction. <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's a really profound point in that it's the idea that someone else knows what's best for us. Yep. And and when you reclaim that, that actually I know what's best for me. Full stop. <laughs> and <laughs> and and you actually um operate from that place. I I get a real centeredness that I know what's best for me because then you're you're really um yeah standing in the center of your force field and and then you get your choice back because whilst ever you're in the center you you've got full maneuverability 360 degrees to go okay this has just come in now how do I want to respond but if you're at the very front of your your force field so to speak and and you're expecting someone to lead you you're off balance. So, so I think that's such a, a key point to in that recognition that I know what's best for me and mm. here I stand and now I choose and now I choose and now I choose. And, and um, which brings it back to that point that you were speaking about earlier in terms of coming back to the now mm. and how that, that actually um, is the interplay between certainty and uncertainty because often if we're if we're hooked in uncertainty our mind is projecting out to the future to go okay what are the possible outcomes what am I going to invite I'm I'm living in fear and and there's part of me hooked to that future outcome and and that's when we look outside of ourselves for the direction to be led to someone else to say what do I do now instead of sitting in ourselves and go what do I do now yes and being operating from that place. Yes. And it feels so different. Um, so, and, and I think that's, that's a beautiful exercise for people to start integrating in when they, when they catch themselves in, in uncertainty, coming back to centre like you just did and, and asking, what do I do now? What is best for me in this moment? What's, what's the 
what's the easiest way forward with the highest possible outcome in mind? And, and I think that's a, a key distinction in that the easiest way forward for, for a lot of people will, and unless we've trained ourselves otherwise, will be the path of least resistance. But that often means being accommodating in a way that's not actually in line with the highest good. So what's the easiest way forward with the highest outcome in mm. mind? Because that re, refocuses you and goes, well, there's a way through. And what's, what's the ideal way through based on the outcome that I want to see happen? not what's the easiest way forward to not ruffle feathers or not um, mm. step on foes or et cetera, et cetera. And that's what I love about the work that we do together. And we've got a uh, workshop coming up in April. I can't remember what date, but we'll put it in the comments. Um, we have a, a half day workshop coming up that that teaches teaches these exact principles, right? Or these, the, the ways that you come back to your center and that you choose, what is it that I need to let go of? What is it that, what are the next steps that I need to take? And it's not about teaching you how to suck eggs. It's about, it's about um, embracing that part of you that knows and just hasn't taken action because of, of that feeling of, oh, I don't know if I have this. Mm. Yes, yes, absolutely. And one of the things that kept kind of circulating in my mind this morning before, before we jumped on was changing from uncertainty to certainty really comes back to and I don't I don't necessarily mean this phrase in in a religious sense um I mean it in a universal sense it's about seeing the god state within and also the god state within others and what I mean by that is simply the infinite potential within yourself where you are the creator of your life and seeing the infinite potential within others and seeing them as the creator in their life. Because if, if you view everything through that lens, that's where you start accessing potential. And, and it's in that, and when people see you see them in that vein, there, there's a buoyancy. And, and that's in, it's in that buoyancy where, where hope kicks back in. Because in, in a fear state with everything being closed, there's not, even though potential may exist, it's not the dominant feeling. And, and we act from a place of feeling, not from a cognitive place. So when, when you're in that buoyancy and there's um, you can actually start to see that way forward through that hopefulness, that's where people feel naturally compelled forward. But it all comes back to that place of I see the infinite potential within you. And if we, for simplicity say, say that's your God state and that you are the creator of your life, um, that's where we're not only activating the, the buoyancy, but we're starting to activate certainty as well. And you, you combine the emotional um, positive feeling with the intention of the certainty of what I see, you're in manifestation mode. Mm. And, and it's when you've got both that, that you're really playing with what is possible and you're then redefining yourself based on that state of being. Um, and, and so for me, that, that's, a, that's a really clear distinction. And, and I, you know, if, if I were to reflect on the work that I do and that I've done, something that isn't trained as such, but I feel is, is like a key ingredient for other people to succeed is seeing that potential within them and holding it so clearly mm. that they can see it too. So how we see ourselves and how we see others and choosing to see them for their infinite potential and being the creators in their life, 
that and then you start to scaffold success mm. and and scaffolding success actually comes back to to the minute changes one percent better one step forward one percent better every day one step forward one percent better one step forward and within a very short amount of time you have not only changed what is outside of you you've actually changed how you see yourself and that's the difference between uncertainty and certainty and we attract when you're just talking about uh, manifesting we attract what we are right so that that um one percent um improvement every day on how we sit in uncertainty do we do we embrace it or do we reject it or um do we go into a fear state or do we go into a wonder oh what magic is going to come out of this and and um go back to our inner child of you know playing with life and and yeah so i'm i'm super excited to talk more about a manifesting um on our podcast in the future because it's a topic that's talked about a lot um and yeah and it's and there's so many facets to it because just simply that we attract what we are um if we if we are very fearful we attract fearful people Mm. Mm. yes and and you also attract and you see the world as something to be fearful of. And so in so for, for extreme cases, people can go out of outside their house and see everything as a threat. Hmm. So if you're seeing everything as a threat, not only are you you attracting that in, but your entire world is defined by seeing everything as a threat. Hmm. And 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 from then from a very objective perspective, that's that's a that's a very um, extreme bias, and it's catching ourselves on our biases mm. and in in whatever way because because freedom actually comes from neutrality. If we can be neutral and and surrender all perception, which is incredibly hard to do, but it comes back to that that stillness and that rec- recognition of what is what how is my perception being trained through my development releasing that coming back to a place of nothing is neither good nor bad it simply is and and having that be be a center point for you and then choosing because it's it's we we can't exist in neutrality because we have to engage with the world. <laughs> um, but, but in finding neutrality, you've surrendered the biases and then you choose in, in going, well, what's going to serve me? What's going to work for me? What, what could I believe that would compel me and my life forward in the way that I want to see evolve and manifest for myself? So, so there's, there's, if, if I was to start to bring some of these concepts together that we've spoken about finding those central pillars within or the central pillar of not only neutrality but coming back to self and then keeping firmly in mind what I want to see happen and developing that self-belief within that what I see happen is actually an inevitability because I'm going to make it so and then I start on that trajectory in making it so that is when again we're shifting from uncertainty and not not having a game plan not having vision not having um, a direction to head to certainty of going I'm stable within I see where I'm going and I've activated within what I need to start moving in that direction and I I just wanted to add to that an example of that that I use currently is I'm I'm obsessed with the word and the feeling of peace. So everything that I am working towards and every action that I take um, every day is is with the intention of feeling more peace in my life, feeling peace in this moment, feeling peace about the future, feeling peace about what I'm going to have for lunch. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything feeling peace if if I 
you know, if I want to go to the gym, but I didn't quite make myself or if I had more, more champagne on Saturday night than I should have. Um, feeling peace and surrendering into, into that and having that as my anchor point. No, that's what I'm coming back to. That's what I'm coming back to. That's, that's where my certainty is because in that peaceful feeling, that's where I know that I'm going to create my best life from. I know that like to my bones. So there's so much certainty in that, which is what brings me back mm. to that intention. Yeah, beautiful. And and what I hear in that is certainty in the uncertainty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. How what a cool. great topic. I'm glad we went with that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. Yeah. Um, yes, if you'd like to continue the, the chat with us, you can join us in VIP chats. DM us and we can send you through the link and um, we look forward to chatting with you next week. Awesome. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye.